All right, today we're going to talk about unified targets in Betaflight 4.1. What the heck is a unified target? Why is there so many targets? Three years ago, it was recognized that the target list for Betaflight kept growing and growing. And right now to build beta flight, at least for me, it takes at least like eight to 10 hours plus to build all the targets in there. And when you really break down the targets, they mostly use the same bunch of processors. So if you go into the targets list in beta flight and you go down to the STM targets, you can see there's STM 32, F405, STM 32, F411, so on and so forth. All these STM ones. So out of all the targets here, we're talking about six total processor types that are available. Now this does not include the F3 targets, that would be different processor type as well. But when you're looking at all the F4 boards, that's it. They all use one variant of those processors. The rest of the things in the targets are just some pin header changes saying that, hey, this pin goes to this pin header on the, on the board, and then a timer and DMA assignments. Well, about three years ago, they started working on DMA and timer assignments. So this is kind of board design stuff. And they made those things available that could be switched and changed and set up, uh, honestly, in the CLI. So with that, they were able to develop then the six target types. And then when you want to change the configuration on those six target types, that's just different settings within the CLI. Now in Betaflight 4.1, you could flash a unified target to your board and then there was config files that you could dump in there. But it was pretty difficult to manage it. You had to flash the unified target, then you had to dump the config file and paste it. If you reset to default, you'd have to redump the original setup. So it was just a little tough to manage. And that was recognized by the Betaflight lead devs. It was a little too much for the user base consumption. So it was available, but it wasn't really pushed. In Betaflight 4.1, unified targets are pretty seamless now. So if you go down in the targets list, you will see in here some of these say legacy. If it's a legacy target and you click on that, that's the old target. So if you click on it, hit load firmware, you'll see that the hex file has the old target name in it. The Flywood F405, and this is RC3 for uh, Betaflight 4.1 release candidate three. That's the, the version I have selected here to date. Conversely, if you click on the one that says that doesn't have legacy behind it and you click load firmware on that one, you will see that it's actually going to load the STM 32F405 unified target to it. What's awesome is in the Betaflight Configurator 10.6, it will automatically put the config file in there. Also that if you do a reset to your board, it doesn't totally wipe out all the settings. It only wipes out the settings that you change. It basically sets it to default. It, essentially, it's seamless. It's like the legacy target. So from a user standpoint, you guys aren't really gonna know the difference. But the questions are coming up on like, what are these legacy? Why does it say legacy behind some of those? Those are the old targets. Now, in some of these targets, you will see there's not a legacy for like this PIKOF4. There's, well, why isn't there a legacy one there? Well. That could be either one or two things, either the unified target, you know, the config file's not made yet, so they're still working on it, or it simply just doesn't have a legacy target. It, it's a new, a new one. So for example, if you look down, iFlight kind of jumped onto this pretty quick. They were actually posting the configs for the boards on the product page. Those are here now. So if you flash these, it will just flash the appropriate STM file, and put in the config and it will all be locked in there. You don't have to worry about resets and the complication will, will be gone. There's not gonna be a legacy for these because these are brand new targets. There was no legacy old one. So if you're using any of those iFlight boards and you were having some troubles in Betaflight 4.0 because you had to flash the unified target, and paste the config from the product page and all that gobbly goop, you don't have to do that in Betaflight 4.1. You just go in here, find the appropriate target and flash it and you're good to go. So let's do a little example here. I have the iFlight dual twin G board plugged in. We have a legacy for the EX F722 dual. I'm gonna go ahead and flash the unified target on this. So I just click the one that doesn't say legacy. I will go down here and pick the firmware what I want. So I'm gonna do Betaflight 4.1 release candidate three is the latest and greatest as of today. I'm gonna hit load firmware. 
And you can see there it's going to flash on the STM32 F7 to the board. I just go ahead and hit flash firmer like I always have. And we wait for it. And wait for it. And wait for it some more. Still waiting. Yay, it's done. Okay, so now that it's flashed on there, let's connect to it. At this point, a message will come up about applying custom defaults. So this is where you want to apply that config file. So we're gonna go ahead and hit apply custom defaults. Don't hit cancel. If you hit cancel on this, it's just gonna give you the STM and it's not gonna know what the gyro is. It's not gonna know any of the pins. It's not gonna work. Now you could go dump the config file manually, but that's silly. Just hit apply custom defaults here. It will apply those and reboot the board. And then Eureka, see, it moves and the, the graphic moves. If you move the board and the graphic moves, you know you've done it right. If you would hit cancel there, the graphic won't move because it won't know what the gyro chip is and the accelerometer or any of that stuff because all that custom stuff that's on this board that says, hey, that F7 processor is gonna connect this pin to this gyro and it's this kind of gyro type and you're using these ports and all that board design stuff, it won't know. And if it doesn't know it, now again, you can paste it in or just reflash the board if you mess it up, not a big deal, but that's how you check it. And I'm gonna go up to the top and hit reset settings. So if you needed to do that for any reason, you can go ahead and do that and we're gonna hit reset here. Now in the past, if you did that in Betaflight 4.0, you would lose all those config file settings. So you'd have to repaste the config file and then repaste any, any of your changes. It was a real pain. Here, you can see if I hit reset there, I don't lose that base config. I can still move the board around and you can see the quad and the configurator still moves. So we're still in good shape there. The other way you can confirm things are in good order is by going to the ports page. If you see all the UARTs listed, you're good. If you see none of the UARTs listed, the config was not applied appropriately or something. Up at the top here, you will see the target as uh, the target name, but then it's really the STM32F7X2 is the actual hex that was applied. And if you type in version now, you will see the STM32F7 on there. So this does bring up a good point with version. Uh, in the past, you always just go to version and type in version to see what target you have. And the new configurator, you're gonna to wanna to look up here at the top. And you, when you're flashing the target, you're gonna to wanna to be flashing this EXF722 dual. You don't wanna go into version and be flashing the STM. So going forward in Betaflight 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, you're never flashing the STMs unless you just want a blank stock, you know, no config settings target. I mean, you can, but it's going to be blank and, you know, it's not going to know what gyro and all the pins and ports. It's not going to know any of that stuff and you have to set it up manually. Okay, so how is this supposed to work for manufacturers? Well, for Betaflight, ultimately when Betaflight builds now, it's just building those six targets. Manufacturers will be submitting their configs to the Betaflight team through a pull request. Uh, they're going to have a limited review of it. Honestly, if the board doesn't set itself up right based on the manufacturer's config, that's the manufacturer's fault and they need to fix it. So I think at the beginning, they'll have somewhat of a limited review. And as manufacturers are getting more accustomed to, to it and kind of more trustworthy, I guess, they might even pull the, the review process off altogether. And as new configs are uh, submitted, they're just kind of auto processed through and, and put into the system where it you know, the, the configurator's kind of combining them together with the unified target when it's flashing onto a board. So that's the advantage of a manufacturer submitting their configs yet to the Betaflight project is that it gets into the configurator here and then it's getting that, that meshing for the users when it's flashed on to any board. Unified targets have been a long process in the making. There was a lot of work to get this to happen. This one's special thanks to uh, Jay Blackman, Jay Flyper, Kyle K, and Mike Keller. The intent of the unified targets is to reduce the overhead maintenance for the project for target upkeep. Again, special thanks to those guys for unified targets. Like I said, it's been uh, two to three years in the making. So with the Betaflight 4.1 release, it looks like it's there to me. Uh, for prime time use, it's seamless and easy to use. So hopefully we see that as a plus. All right, everybody, thanks, and I hope this helped.
Thank you.